I always say you need to have some gold exposure in your portfolio, kind of insurance against both inflation and economic chaos. And while I typically recommend owning gold directly, either actual bullion or the GLD, the ETF that tracks the price of the precious metal, I've been adamant that if you want to own a gold miner, it needs to be Rand Gold Resources. Why? Because Rand Gold's the best run company in the industry. Some of the lowest production costs, a proven track record of being able to find more of the stuff because they're willing to mine in regions where others won't do business. The company has five mines across three African con- uh, countries, Mali, the Ivory Coast, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, none of which are what you would call necessarily all that stable. When the price of gold rises, like it's been doing pretty steadily over the past four months, Rand Gold tends to benefit the most. Until a week ago, that, boy, that view was dead right. So the stock has rallied nearly 50% since we last spoke to the CEO in September, over a period where the price of the precious metals up about 11%. However, when the company reported its most recent results last Wednesday, the stock got obliterated. It's, it sank from $95 to $85, a single session. That's because even though Rand Gold managed to deliver a small earnings beat thanks to higher gold prices and aggressive cost cuts, their production declined by 11% versus the previous quarter, result of setbacks at two of its good mines. And in the past, the story has always been about production growth. On the other hand, management maintained their full-year production guidance, which suggests they believe they're dealing with short-term problems, maybe one-off issues. If Rangel can fix these production problems, I could see this stock going right to 101. But in the wake of a quarter that was widely viewed as a disappointment, people want some reassurance. So let's go to Dr. Mark Bristow. He's the CEO of Rangel Resources. Find out more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Dr. Bristow, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim, how's it? Well, you know, I've been recommending your stock, and I saw the numbers, and I said, it's got to be one-off. They've got to be able to fix the Tongan and Kabali properties. And when I go through your notes, it seems like that you are confident these problems can be fixed this year. Yes, sure. And, Jim, just a caution. You know, gold mining is not only about gold production. It's about profitability. And if you look at our profits, they're up quarter on quarter, year on year. And uh, we grew our cash. We've got no debt. And, you know, every quarter can't be a better quarter than the previous one. That's not real. Um, and, uh, you know, as you point out, we've got, uh, we, we've got some tough operating environments. And every now and then we have uh, challenges. Uh, Lula Goncota had one of its best quarters. Mm-hmm. Marilla was as steady as it goes. And we had some challenging operating uh, situations, both in the Ivory Coast, uh, compounded by some power interruptions, and Kabali, where we also had a, a mill failure, we had to fix it. And, you know, fixing things in these remote places takes a bit of time. Well, but uh, it doesn't detract from our business of delivering value, and, uh, and certainly, as you point out, our guidance is intact. Now, at the same time, the, it, it does not necessarily raise the production cost. I mean, you're still dealing with the lowest production cost of any of the major miners, right? Absolutely. And, and, and what's more, we're growing our cash position. We've never cut capital. We've never impaired a dollar on our balance sheet. So, you know, that's business. And sure, we're going to have our ups and downs. But, uh, you know... The right thing is we should have a few more ups than downs, and and we've been able to deliver that for 20 years now. Well, uh, you guys are always straightforward. The Kabali mine, at one point you even talk about how it's been, uh, it's kind kind of had a long streak where nothing went wrong, and in gold mining, things do go wrong. Absolutely. You know, we had a record year last year. We, uh, (laughs) We landed with a bit of a bump on the first quarter. But you know what? We know what we're do, doing. This is a long-term game, a long-term business uh, with long-term allocation of capital. And, you know, I've always uh, uh, kept my eye on the horizon. I mean, we also, we, let me tell you, Jim, everyone's peddling very fast. We're very focused on addressing some of these challenges and we'll fix it. I have no doubt about it. We'll fix it. Now, uh, Dr. Perso, it also seems that with this negative interest rates in a lot of different countries, low rates, if you're not going to make any money holding your holding money in a bank, you might as well go buy gold. Isn't that part of what's going on right now? Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, you, everyone, and I've heard this you know, most of my life, and, and Jim, I come from Africa. You know, one thing you don't trust, politicians and paper currency. You need to have a bit of a spread, and, uh, and gold is a good bet in anybody's portfolio. All right, we just want to go back to the Ivory Coast. See, I don't know Ivory Coast. I mean, these are places that you're more, uh, you're more at home with than I am, okay? When I read that the power grid has supply interruptions, why should I necessarily think that they can fix them? 
Well, they, it's, one, it's a country in Africa uh, that's probably got the second best infrastructure after South Africa. And it's got a government that's really investing in, in that infrastructure. It's had challenges. It's come out of a 10-year conflict period where not much money was invested in the infrastructure. And we have a backup power uh, station which has, uh, it has the ability to, to run the mine when the power grid is down. The only problem is with our expansion, we've had to order some extra generators and they're only coming in uh, in quarter three. So we got okay. caught with uh, not enough generators to completely replace the, the, the power and the grid went down uh, for about a week. Okay, that's good. Now, last question. Uh, when you hear about demand, uh, we used to think India had big demand uh, for uh, wedding season. China, big demand because they don't trust their paper. Are those places still uh, natural, uh, uh, natural buyers? Or is it Europe where, uh, frankly, the rates are so ridiculous that you're paying to keep your money in a bank? I don't want to do that. I'd rather pay a deposit box and put gold in it. You know, uh, Jim, we ship gold every, every week. And, you know, when we don't ship it, and we delay it for a day or two, there's a lot of tense people around. There's a big demand for gold. And, uh, and we, you know, I think more so we as an industry haven't managed that our supply side of the gold equation. And, but slowly that supply side is, uh, is now uh, shrinking. Yes. And w we have no reason to believe that there's any softening on the demand side. And when you look at the world, when you look at the global politics, as you point out, you know, in a, in a world now where you can't make money by investing it in the bank, you can't trust anything, you need to have a little bit of security in any portfolio, and there's no, nothing better than gold. You know, it's the only currency that uh, politicians can't print. Boy, you're absolutely right. That's why we said it since the day this show started that you got to own some gold. If you want to own a gold stock, you own Rand Gold. Thank you so much, Mark Bristow, CEO of Rand Gold Resources. Great to see you, sir. Pleasure. This guy's going to be back. It's one time glitch. This is the one to own. G O L D, Mark Bristow, David Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.